South Korea is not some innocent victim here. To quote this article that I recommended in my previous video, there have been frequent naval clashes around the northern limit line. Indeed, it seems likely that it has been preserved by the current South Korean and U.S. authorities for that purpose. South Korean President and Chairman Kim Jong-il at the summit on October 4, 2007, agreed to a special peace and cooperation zone in the West Sea. But this peace initiative was overturned, as so many others, by the incoming South Korean president. I don't think the media gave fair coverage when South Korea was firing for four hours thousands of live shells into the waters that North Korea claims as their own, and it's not an unreasonable claim since it's within the 12 nautical mile limit from the North Korean coast. It's not an unreasonable request that North Korea says, don't set off live ammunition right in this area. That's not even explained by the media. And another article I recommend makes the point that if South Korea was really interested in peace, you would think it would carry out its military drills in a less sensitive area. They have plenty of islands in the Western Sea for artillery practice. They don't need to be so close to the northern limit line. A line drawn way too close to North Korea's coast. A line imposed unilaterally by a U.S. general. The sea border that has become the main battleground between North and South Korea 57 years after it was imposed by a U.S. general has been called legally indefensible by American officials for more than three decades. Then Secretary of State Henry Kissinger wrote in a 1975 classified cable that the unilaterally drawn northern limit line was, quote, clearly contrary to international law. Two years before, the American ambassador said in another cable that many nations would view South Korea and its U.S. ally as, quote, in the wrong if clashes occurred in the disputed areas along the boundary. You have to understand what's happening here, and the media isn't making it clear. South Korean Marines have fired live artillery into waters that, according to international customary law, belong to North Korea. South Korea, however, claims the waters as its own, based on a sea border drawn unilaterally by the U.S. military in 1953. Hardly unprovoked, the North Korean retaliation was triggered by the South Korean violation of North Korean territorial waters. Moreover, the artillery exchange between the two Koreas coincided with the South Korean maneuvers involving 70,000 South Korean troops backed by the U.S. Marines. North Korea saw the exercises as a rehearsal for an invasion, not an unreasonable inference given the number of troops involved in Lee's overt hostility towards North Korea. MSNBC thought this deserved a headline, North Korea showing no signs of regret. Yet when North Korea did issue a statement about regret, saying it was very regrettable, the civilians who died, the two civilians, it didn't get the same treatment. North Korea's dire warnings raised tension. The media is in no way close to giving you an accurate view of the situation. North Korea issued a statement saying it was very regrettable, but what were those civilians doing at a military base? And the claim that those those two civilians were actually at the military base is supported by the victim's own brother. So I wouldn't be so quick to dismiss what North Korea says. I'll have more about this, about President Bush's policy, more about how the media has been covering this, and especially the disgraceful performance of Susan Rice, our supposed representative to the UN. The US ambassador to the UN, Susan Rice, should resign.